Hey guys, this is Jared Walton with Tom's Hardware, and I'm here doing a teardown of the MSI GeForce RTX 3080 Gaming X Trio 10G. How's that for a mouthful? Anyway, I'm here with the card and I'm gonna do a teardown today and just take a closer look at things. You can see here looking at the back, we've got the capacitors that have been so much in the news for the last week or two. This one's using five SP caps and then the main, or not main, but the one MLCC block. It's got a triple fan cooling solution. Nothing super significant has changed since the previous generation RTX 2080 Super for MSI. Like this is almost identical core design here. The cooler and everything is the same. The main difference is it's got the three power connectors this time. We've got 11 screws holding on this back plate and helping to secure the cooler to the main GPU plus the four in the center that actually secures the GPU cooler. So let's go ahead and quickly zip through here. I'm gonna fast forward and we're gonna pull all 11 screws out and see about prying off the back plate. So overall, this is a pretty standard design. You've got the RGB lighting strip on the top. You got RGB on the side as well. And here we go, we'll just pop off this cover. It's got a few little uh, sticky pads holding holding it on to the capacitors and other blocks on the board, but it's gonna pop off here in just a second. You always worry about these things because you don't want to break anything, but. All right, and uh, so there you can see the sticky pads for the backs of the memory, as well as some of the capacitor blocks, um, power regulation blocks, and you got the LED strips up top there. And let's see, I'm going to quickly put these onto the main cover and we'll get back to the internals in a sec. So not a ton to see on the back here. We've just, you know, you can see all these extra capacitors that they put back there to help with power regulation, voltage regulation, all of that stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and remove the CPU mounting bracket. These things are spring loaded. They put quite a bit of pressure on because, you know, you don't want you don't want it to be a loose connection. You really want it to be secure. And all right, uh, getting this part separated, uh, it's still just kind of glue and paste holding it together at this point, but figuring out how to pry it apart does take a little bit of doing. You can see there's, there's these two connectors for the three fans. The white one powers two of the fans and the black one powers the third. I'm not sure which fans exactly the white ones go to if they're the outside fans or just two of them or whatever. But uh, let's connect, let's disconnect these and then we should be good to actually pull the thing apart. And yeah, don't break anything, right? Here we go. And once you, once you do get this part, which eh, here we go. Oh, there's, there's some more wires there that I'm going to have to deal with. Maybe I won't have to actually take them out though, because that's one more thing that I want to do. All right, so we've got it apart and now you can see the front side of the card. Here's the memory chips, all the other voltage regulators and capacitors and all the, the naked glory of the MSI RTX 3080 board. And this pretty much looks similar to what you see from some of their competitors. There's a ton of thermal paste on this, which is interesting. Like, you know, people talk about putting a pea-sized thing of non-conductive thermal paste on their CPU and such. I'm like, this is more like, maybe not a grape size, but there is a lot of thermal paste there and it can make a bit of a mess. So be careful. Uh, now let's see, you've got these pads link up with the, with the heat sink. I'm not exactly sure what's under here it looks like just some more sp caps and the lp20 uh, sorry lr22 blocks and then of course the pads for the memory and some of the more sp caps and so on and so forth so you know you've got a lot of contact points now between the radiator and the uh and the board to help keep things cool you're not just worrying about cooling the gpu but you got to cool everything that supplies the GPU with power. And that's it. There's your teardown. Hope you enjoyed that. Now it's time to put the thing back together. You gotta just line up the holes and then we'll just reverse the order. So we gotta do the center 
GPU mounting bracket first, which, uh, let's see, is it square or is it a rectangle? Uh, it looks, I, I guess it's actually a rectangle, so I've got it backwards. Here we go. Get it in the right position, then we can just uh, go ahead and screw it down. You know, there's actually putting it on is a little more difficult since it fights back against you, but just do the little X pattern as you tighten these, and then we'll move on and we'll get the back plate back on. And this one's not as hard to, you know, you're not fighting any springs or whatever this time, just the thermal pads. And once that's done, all that remains is hooking up the fans and we're done. So MSI's card, I'll have the full review up tomorrow and it's a pretty good card. It's, I mean, it's faster than your stock founders edition, mostly because it's factory overclocked. I did have some instability with the original drivers, but the 456.55 drivers have fixed that. And now it's, <clears throat> it's running fine. I got about a 75 megahertz overclock beyond factory with the um, GPU and 750 megahertz extra on the memory. And uh, yeah, so it's it's about 3% faster than the Founders Edition and runs about 10 degrees cooler. So there you have it. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And I'll be doing some more card teardowns in the near future.